apologize for being a little late today. Our guest was having some trouble getting on, but we are here now. And thank you guys also for being here. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is the show where I introduce you to amazing people who are doing great things in the world like you that I think you should know about. I met our guest today, actually, at an Engine 2 conference in Pasadena. But first, I had heard him speak at one of the McDougal Advanced Study Weekends, and I really liked what he had to say and especially was impressed because he actually worked with Nathan Pritikin, who is the person I would most like to get on the show. Unfortunately, he has passed away. But I actually discovered Dr. Dick Delgado probably about 12 years ago through a YouTube video, which I'll link in the show notes, that was really incredible. It was about how to become diabetic in six hours because he really understood that oil is not a health food, that it's a hurt food. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Nick Delgado. Chef AJ, it's great to be on your show. And I know your audience is receptive to this message and maybe some of the newer viewers and listeners might find it challenging. Yet I ask you to keep your mind open because this is representative of nearly 50 years of research, education, and science. And I know we're up against some rather large food industry, pharmaceutical industry, others with agendas, but our agenda is to educate and to help people to live a longer, better quality life. And I know we're in trying times, so that's one of the exciting opportunities uh, that now that you've invited me to be on your show, I, I want your audience to also know that I've been doing live blood microscopy for 43 years and I've been trained by some of the greatest doctors and scientists in the world who have endorsed my newest book, which is called Blood Doesn't Lie. So I'm pretty excited about it. And you mentioned that video that went viral about uh, how to become diabetic in six hours. And uh, it, it really uh, caught people uh, by surprise. And, and I, I, and I want to be clear, too, that you know oils and fats are really seriously problematic when you combine them with sugar, which who eats a donut unless the donut has oil with sugar on it, right? So it's really the combination that makes it far worse. I don't think there's a, a nutritionist out there that would argue that sugar is good for you. Uh, but there are those that would say that oil is a health food. And also there's so many people out there confused about protein and the source of protein. And I think in talking to Dr. John McDougall in one of my last interviews with him, he agreed that that's probably the most misunderstood besides oil um, in the diet. And I, and I think you and I are on the same page, which excites me to no end because you represent something that the audience needs to know. I have worked with a lot of great public health educators even educators that came from Loma Linda University, they were well versed in the science and they truly believed what we were talking about, but they didn't walk their talk. They didn't follow it. And so when I find someone who's a chef, who is a culinary chef, who's broken away from traditional methods of food preparation and has embraced this idea of uh, essentially low salt, uh, no oil, no sugar, a whole natural food cooking and preparation without animal product, I am thrilled to know and because it's those people in my humble experience of 43 years that tend to adhere to the program better than anyone else. And that's where we started food demonstration classes with my actual mother, who's 85 years old, who used to teach along with Denise Vilvin with uh, Nathan Pritikin and the other scientists, we always did weekly food demonstration classes for at least six weeks to help people to break their habits and addictions to sugars and oils and fats. So I applaud you, Chef AJ. You were doing the most important work along with the science for, for what I teach to back it up. And of course, Dr. Uh, Michael Greger, How Not to Die, uh, Caldwell Esselstein, the incredible uh, doctor talking about preventing and reversing heart disease. Uh, you and I both love John McDougall and his work. And we're all saying the same thing, along with Joel Furman and uh, Neil Bernard. We're all saying the same thing. Move away from processed foods. And I am so excited about your book, <laughs> Unprocessed. Oh, I, I read it again before our show. And I, I love the book because it really says it all. Unprocessed. We're not arguing that people need to eat healthier. We're arguing that we need to start learning to prepare foods in its whole, as close to as Pritikin used to say, food as grown. That's critical, right? 
Right. That I would love to hear a little bit more about how you got to work with Dr. Pritikin because uh, uh, Dr. Hans Deal, who is a regular on this show, also did. But I want to let you know that I am posting right now the link to that video, How to Become Diabetic in Six Hours, which you basically gave yourself diabetes by consuming oil. And you mentioned so many of my mentors, Dr. Esselstyn and Ornish and McDougall, who Furman, Gregor, who advocated no oil diet. But there is so many new doctors now, many of them even plant-based that are now saying oil is good, it's heart healthy. I mean, even if it was, it's so calorically dense, who could really afford those calories. So it, it, there's a lot of confusion out there when it comes to fat in general, but oil in particular. Yeah. Um, I've interviewed some of those people who are plant-based that are advocating oils. And uh, I know John Roll, uh, Rollo, I believe is how you say his name, has a podcast and he's plant-based. And when I first interviewed him uh, back at a Pasadena convention event, he was saying that he was using, you know, oils in his uh, plant-based diet. And he argued that because he's an ultra marathoner, that he would burn the calories, you know, as he uh, exercised. And there might be some truth to that. Obviously, if you're highly conditioned as an athlete and obviously a person who can run an ultra marathon is something insane, like over a hundred miles. Well, I do something insane, which is nonstop, uh, curl and press, dumbbell presses overhead, which defies gravity because we have to lift the weight completely overhead. Uh, and our competitions last for at least one hour of lifting dumbbells. And I've gone against some of the world's strongest strength endurance athletes in the world, even though I'm approaching 66 this year, the reality is I can still hold my own against some of the strongest strength endurance athletes in the world. I'm not a runner the way John is, uh, uh, Rich that is, but I, I I can run and I love to run on the beach and in the water, but the reality is that oils are still not your best source of calories because what happens is, as I demonstrate in the video, the oils, as Pritikin once described, it's not about trans fat, monounsaturate fat, polyunsaturate fat, because everyone gets confused and sidetracked with the way the uh, molecule is designed within the fat where the real argument is, and it's interesting that it was Pritikin who figured this out, because here he is, an engineer, a chemist, a scientist. He had, I don't know, 14 uh, patents that uh, later you know, developed into some pretty extraordinary uh, discoveries. But he said, and accurately so, that oil itself is mechanically sticky. And you know this to be true, because if you put some nuts and seeds in your hand, that are dry and you toss them back and forth in your hand, they'll go back and forth. They're not sticky, right? The inner core of walnuts, which walnuts I believe are healthy in small quantities, have fiber intact. The oil is embedded within the fibrous structure and the plant structure. And as you chew it, you absorb the oil very, very slowly in combination with fiber and it's tolerated properly. And in fact, we even believe nuts and seeds should be sprouted and that takes it to the next level of nutrient density, right? Um, but what I'm saying is the oil, which has been extracted from, say, 14 years of corn to make one tablespoon of corn oil, or uh, taking multiple hundreds of olives to make small amounts of oil, that oil, if you pour it in your skin, on your hand, and then you turn it, it, it barely drips. It's like thick grease, right? You could even sprinkle salt or sugar on it, and it would stick. It would stick. If you put walnuts and sprinkled salt or sugar and turn it upside down, the salt or sugar might fall to the ground, right? So the point is mechanically, and here's what I want our audience to understand, and maybe they've never had this experience, which I'm blessed because for 43 years, every day I'm testing people uh, blood under a microscope with a team of doctors and experts. And we look at the blood, a drop of blood believe it or not, under a microscope, which I have right behind me, I have microscopes, believe it or not, in my home, at my office upstairs, downstairs in my media studio. Every doctor I train, I make sure they see this effect. And what is this effect? The oil itself from even the, the virginest, if you will, olive oil, the purest of pure from Italy, whatever you want to say, that oil 
And I have a new video, by the way, which says, is oil healthy? Is olive oil healthy? And I comment about other doctors talking about oil. And it's about 48 minutes long. The video you're talking about is about six minutes long. But I really go into the whole thing with Dr. Clapper, Dr. Josh Axe, different comments that they're making. But the point is oil, getting back to my original point, is mechanically sticky. That when the oil enters into your body, through your mouth, into your gut, when it hits the digestive tract, there is what's called lacteals and the lymphatic system is where the oil first is absorbed, believe it or not, according to Guyton's medical physiology into the general circulation, but it starts out by gumming up the immune system. And this is not good. You don't wanna slow down the production of a million white blood cells if you have a microbe that approaches your body, a virus. You don't want to depress the immune system. You don't want to depress with oils the nitric oxide in the endothelial lining. You don't want to uh, combat or distract the body's ability for free-flowing oxygen. But see, right after the oil coats the lymphatic system and the white blood cells and the antibodies and gums everything up, then it pours into through the lacteal duct it into the general circulation, right into the bloodstream. And you visually within two to four hours, and as I mentioned, you become diabetic within six hours, any person, I can literally induce diabetes with giving them enough oil within six hours because everyone tests blood tests fasting. I do it postprandial, which is the most accurate way to measure the real world because we don't walk around fasting all day long, we eat. So the point is, when this oil enters the bloodstream, it coats every one of the red blood cells. And when the red blood cells touch each other, you physically see them stick together. Now, this was demonstrated by Dr. Meyer Friedman, who wrote the book, Type A, Type B Personality. And he took firemen and he actually had them drink a glass of heavy cream which was a saturated fat. And then he compared it to vegetable oil of various types. And they drank it just like I did in the experiment I showed. And within, they were measuring the blood circulation and the capillaries of the eyeball, which they could measure in real time. And there's a clip on my video where I actually show blood cells flowing through the smallest capillaries where they travel one by one. And he showed, as I showed on the video, blood cells clumping together. And instead of one cell getting through the capillary bed as it's appropriately to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide, three or four cells would clump together at the capillary juncture and they couldn't get through, AJ. They couldn't get through. And because they couldn't get through, 30% of the oxygen carrying capacity of the entire body within four hours is completely inhibited for at least 12 hours. That is my concern. Not whether olive oil is a healthy food extracted from a health food as olives are. It's that it is mechanically greasy. Now, Indian food is notorious for using ghee, an oil clarified butter, right? They use a lot of oils. And here you take a healthy cuisine, vegetarian, but you have Indian people who have high blood pressure. They have diabetes. They have cancer. Why? because you take good natural foods and then you mix it with a lot of oil where you visually, I don't even like to walk into an Indian restaurant oftentimes, even though I love the turmeric and the smell and the taste, the oil is so concentrated for hours. I'm sleepy and I, I, I don't drink coffee, but I have this urge to want to drink coffee to wake myself up because all day long, I have so much energy and I feel so clean. It's, I don't know how to describe what it's like to have blood during the day that's clean and free of fats known as triglycerides. That's what Dr. Meyer Friedman demonstrated that within hours of drinking healthy firemen who, who, you know, firemen can run up stairs. They're incredibly fit, but within hours, their entire circulation was clumped up, restricted of oxygen, which leads to increased risk of diabetes, cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, almost every known disease, including worsening of the immune system, and we haven't even got to that yet, is all related. So Pritikin taught us this a long time ago, Chef AJ, and you'll probably agree with this. The worst food you could eat, number one, because it kills more people than anything else, is protein-based foods, which are high in cholesterol. Number one worst food is cholesterol. Number two worst is separated oils. Number three worst is excess protein. Shocking to everyone listening to this. Number four worst, he classified as sugar. Number five was salt. Everyone has that flipped, right? They say, oh my God, salt. You can't go to a restaurant and find a salt shaker. Sugar, oh, avoid it like it's the plague, right? 
Oh, but protein? No, it's never talked about as unhealthy. It's a harmful toxin, particularly from animal products. And by the way, the two worst things about animal products is they're loaded with a heavy viral load. And when Tyson chicken was launched, you find the highest incidence of, I won't even use the word because we're being censored every time we use the word, a particular kind of virus that's kind of spreading around. The highest incidence of viral load came from chicken in Tyson chicken plants, in the workers handling chicken. And to say the least, chicken is loaded with salmonella. It's loaded with um, E. coli. It's loaded with various harmful bacterial loads that the FDA lets slip through because we got to feed our people protein. And that's really not good, Chef AJ. So the worst thing is these proteins, which we're saying number three is the worst you can consume, but, 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 but the protein also is bad because of its high bacterial and viral load, which is what's making so many people sick. In the third chapter of my new book, Blood Doesn't Lie, I talk about zoological origin of infectious diseases. And it comes in most cases from animal origins, not from other humans. Yes, we can become contaminated from other humans that have been eating animal products. And you know, people who prepare in their kitchen, I even forbid people to bring chicken into my kitchen to cut on cutting boards or steak or meat because I don't want the viral load, which even if you use very strong, harsh chemicals to try and get rid of the, the bacteria, 99%, that 1% of bacteria and virus that can't be removed, it's so toxic, it's deadly. So I don't want them in my kitchen. You know, you go into a person who has a traditional um, restaurant or kitchen, they have those... Uh, kind of collection of heat you know you open up the little thing above the fire area the cooking area and 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 is loaded with grease right everywhere you look their kitchen has grease and they got to clean the grease and the grum all that grease thickens your blood and destroys your health that is my premise so i've been posting the link to how to become diabetic in six hours you mentioned a longer video you did that's about yeah. 45 minutes where can i find that and i'll post that link as well yeah uh danny can you pull up the how to become uh is olive oil healthy and send that to chef aj and i'll it's thank you 40 out minute link you know dr delgado but they're always touting the health benefits of the mediterranean diet my understanding it's not because of the olive oil but in spite of the olive oil Correct. There's actually been studies that teased out the Mediterranean diet separating from, quote, wine and from oil. And the, the diets that espoused Mediterranean with the same, you know, we know every long-lived culture eats a lot of beans and the Mediterranean diet, it may be garbanzo beans and so forth, right? So those whole food parts, and think about Mediterranean, Italian, Spanish, people walk to you know the local uh, food stand and they get their fresh fruits and vegetables every day so they have different habits they eat smaller volumes of food you rarely see obese people right these people exercise more you can point to all of that but when they did this they teased out the exact data they said what if they had all the same exercise criteria all the same you know volumes of food their weight remained stable but all we did was remove the oil the process oil and they got the fats from the whole olives, the whole uh, natural food, the way nature and God intended. And, and, and also they found that when they left out the wine and they ate grapes instead, you know, without a doubt, the longer lived people, the healthier blood indicators, C-reactive protein, blood lipids, triglycerides, all the factors that measured improved circulation and pointed to increased longevity and vitality. It was oil-free and wine-free. Alcohol is a toxin. Don't kid yourself. The French drink wine every day. They have the highest death rate from cirrhosis to liver the world, even though they don't drink to intoxication. Everyone advocating drink a glass of wine to calm down. They are wrong. If you We, we at Pritikin limited up to four ounces of alcohol a week. That was four glasses of wine, four cans of beer, or four shots of whiskey. They're all the same amount of alcohol concentration. Alcohol is a toxin to the liver and to the brain. So alcohol itself is not promoting. Now, some people say, well, the gut produces its own alcohol. Yes, there's probably some amount that the human can tolerate. But why would we push that upper limit? You know, alcohol should be taken appropriately. It depresses the immune system. It's horribly toxic. It turns into estrogen, just like the fact that 
the, the animal product is loaded with estrogen, which is another topic we should get to. But I, I do want to say without a doubt, the oil, when it was left out of the Mediterranean diet, without exception, the people were healthier, their blood levels indicated incredible results, not just on fasting, Chef AJ, but based on postprandial in the middle of the day, which when I love to test people to catch them, like in the real world, when their blood is loaded with fat and they're just tired and fatigued and they don't know why, and I show them why. I've been doing this for 43 years and I'm showing it on video now and we have online courses about it, but this video really would, remove any doubt. Is olive oil healthy? Did you find it, Danny? Yeah. Okay. You're sending it. You have Chef AJ's email? Okay. Yeah. It's in the nickdelgado.com. You can just uh, Nick D PhD. We'll send it to you right now. So it's an amazing video along with the one you mentioned about John McDougall, my other famous talk about protein, which I remove every doubt that protein from plant-based is in uh, it, um, inadequate that somehow we've been led to believe that animal protein is a complete protein when every human study, yeah, every human study shows, uh, there's, there's a video I did, the myth about protein. Now there's a, a little bit longer version, but I felt like I came across with a chip on my shoulder. I was a little aggressive about it because I'm kind of an aggressive guy by my nature because I'm a competitive athlete and I maintain optimum testosterone levels and hormone levels. So my level, even though I'm turning 66 years old, I have a hormone level of a 22 year old. And I've learned, Neil Bernard wrote a book about hormone balance and diet. And I, I'm, a, I'm a, just adamant about supporting healthy adrenals during the time of viral outbreaks, supporting testosterone, proper hormone balance, because those people are struggling with weight and maybe they've done everything they seem humanly possible to improve their diet to unprocessed whole foods. They're maybe doing some exercise, but if their hormones are off and genetically they have that tendency, they'll be the type that would have survived in the rainforest, you know, when everyone else would have starved in a desert, they would outlive us because they have more fat cells, but, but they're struggling because they can't seem to reduce the, 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 the size of the fat cells. You can't reduce the number even with lipo, but you can reduce the size. So, We've covered a lot of subjects here and I'm so excited about it. But my other video I'd love you to share with the audience is the myth about protein. It's about 48 minutes also long. And we did a slight edit because there were some arrogant comments I made that I'm embarrassed about. Right. Well, whatever he emails me, if, as long as it's during this broadcast, I'd be happy to do it or afterwards. We have some questions though, like for a few people, is it okay to eat olives? And Dina yes. said, does he agree that people can still overeat overt fats, even though the oils are embedded in the natural package? Like olives, avocado, nuts, seeds, and soy. Yes. Um, think of the categories of fats. Now, uh, mm -hmm. avocado is a little bit more like a fruit, right? And it's, 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 it's creamier. It's a little bit fattier. And I've had some health food people come to me and I've tested their blood and they had high triglycerides when they were eating six avocados a day. I, I got to say, the guy looked in good shape, but he was fatigued and tired. His blood was loaded with triglycerides. So somewhere above two avocados a day is probably the upper limit. Uh, I don't think you can overeat nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives when you're at a good weight and you're exercising. But so many of our people, what is it, more than 90% now are struggling with being above their ideal weight and over 50% are classified as extremely obese. So I would say that in the pursuit of reduction of body fat, while you're losing weight in your efforts to exercise and eat properly, include very sensible amounts. I think uh, Caldwell Esselstein will admit you could have a few little nuts and seeds each day, you know, but people, he says, they don't just stop at one or two or three nuts or seeds, which gives, for example, three walnuts, all your essential fatty acids you need for the day. They keep eating them because they're salted and roasted, but if they're unprocessed and they're made in a recipe I think it's reasonable to include, and I do include, because I think we need those essential fatty acids, but from the whole state in a reasonable amount, particularly always look in the mirror besides measuring your body fat levels. And if you're where you need to be, great. If you're not, cut back on them. They're the most dense calorie foods besides the processed oils, which are far worse. The oils and sugars themselves are far worse. Nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives come further down on the scale. And you have a wonderful uh, outline of you know the density of foods, and I totally agree with that. Right. Well, Laurel says this guy is in his 60s. <laughs> That's great. And I have a nice comment from Tim Marie says, Dr. Delgado, thank you for your clarity when discussing diet. When the message is consistent and supported by data, it's much easier for the rest of us to effectively share the word. And people are asking if your new book is out yet. I see there's a book behind you. It's the same one I have. 
the one that you signed for me at the Engine 2 conference. I love what you wrote, by the way. Very nice. <laughs> I have a few new books out. Uh, one is uh, Acne Be Gone for Good because I'm the number one solver of acne and skin problems. And I, I concur with Dr. John McDougall that when uh, he had a, a group of twins that were on an oil-free diet versus the other twin that was not on plant-based that the oil-free made all the difference. So everything I'm talking about, Acne Be Gone for Good with my co-author, Dr. Sonia Batarisi Banasel. Uh, an amazing board certified dermatologist who also agrees with me, oil-free, plant-based. And we talk about certain special cruciferous vegetable supplements that help to reduce uh, hormonal acne. It's an amazing book, my bestseller. And then the other book, which I came out on Valentine's Day that I'm really excited about is Mastering Love, Sex and Intimacy, which is endorsed by Dr. John Gray, who I'm good friends with. And I wrote this book because I felt there was this disconnect between men and women and the ability to please each other. And there's this whole new science about enjoying intimacy and love and building up, um, shall I say, love energy without ejaculating. And in that regard, you build just tremendous energy. By the time you're 65, uh, it's been shown that men can orgasm, but they should not ejaculate more than maybe once or twice a month. And that's strange for men to understand, but women have the ability to have multiple orgasms under the right conditions. And yet, sadly, 75% of women never achieve uh, such pleasure with their partner. And so I wrote this book because I think love is the prevailing uh, um, emotion that we need to embrace in these trying times. But the book that's out now, and it's an ebook, which they can actually uh, get uh, by going to nickdelgado.com. Uh, the early version just came out and it's called Immune Rejuvenation. And the book that we're hoping Amazon, which by the way, Amazon banned that first book because I talked openly about things they didn't want me to talk about. And I, I can't go into detail. I don't want to mess this show up either because I've been monitored and everything. But um, I, I, will, I will tell you everything I put in that book, I believe is accurate 100%. It's verified by the five top doctors in the world endorsing the book. But I, I will say that the new book is Blood Doesn't Lie. And we're hoping Amazon's going to accept that book and will come out in print next week. But right now, the ebook, they can just simply leave their name, uh, email, and phone number, and go to nickdelgado.com, and you'll see uh, the book will be a PDF downloaded to them, uh, and they have that opportunity to get Immune Rejuvenation, which I'm proud of the book. It's an amazing book, um, but I did something different with this, the, the final edition. Um, I didn't want to feel like somehow I, I let the audience down by not sharing what I believe to be the truth. So I removed everything about politics and, you know, controversial things, but I went hardcore into every step of building a very powerful immune system. Everything even going so far as about how love and our emotions and our hormones and our diet and our exercise and our sleep, those are the five principal factors that enhance a, a person's uh, immune system so they can feel, if even if they do get sick with an infectious disease, they'll overcome it fairly quickly. And if not, we give them the steps, much like Joel Furman and Dr. Uh, John McDougall talk about in their amazing books and their talks about how to combat these uh, incredibly dangerous, uh, horrible diseases that are really man-made in most cases or just lack of education. Nice. So would you mind talking a little bit about that acne book and what the premise is? Because uh, in a couple of weeks on the show, I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with the Nelson twins, Nina and Randa, yes. they wrote a book about acne called the clear skin diet. And their premise is not just, not for everyone, but for people with acne, not just no oil, but no added fat. And that's the diet they follow like me. Yes. Um, you know, I have to admit, um, you know, remember for 43 years here, here I was a person who had skin problems, pimples, breakouts. I was on American Bandstand, if you remember that show. And each week I was on national television dancing. And I, would, I was so horrified if I'd get a pimple or a big uh, blackhead or you know uh, a breakout. And, and, and I, I, I struggled with it. Not only was that, I was struggling with my weight, but because I was an athlete, I could control my weight by you know extreme exercise. But I discovered over the years that the skin 
uh, is critical and receptive to oils and fats in excess. So I would agree with the twins that it's smart to go to a 10, 10, 80 approach, meaning 10% fat, 10% uh, uh, protein, 80% starch, complex carbohydrates, right? Foods is grown. Uh, but I will say an amazing, shocking discovery was that cruciferous vegetables eat, eaten in the raw state. And we found you need about two pounds of raw cruciferous vegetables a day that those would, um, how shall I say, alter the metabolism of harmful estrogen metabolites, inclusive of, without getting overly complex, what's called sex hormone binding globulin. And we discovered this transporter hormone was the one that carried DHT and androgen right to the tissues of the cells where acne developed. So when we increased our plant-based diet, and the more whole plant-based foods we ate, the lower sex hormone binding globulin, uh, just like, uh, sh actually, shall I, I, I need to correct myself, the higher sex hormone binding globulin levels, we were able to then correct acne at the site of the problem. And again, there's another premise about um, mTOR, mammalian target on rapamycin, which is a little complex, but animal products tend to overstimulate skin and acne growth. But I would agree, if you're struggling with acne, there's two things. We have a product called Estroblock, which is like one capsule is equal to two pounds of cruciferous vegetables a day. And it took off and it's got so many reviews on Amazon. We have a website called estherblock.com and all the kids use it. And the moment they use the product within weeks, their skin clears up, they go off the product, the acne comes back, they go back on it, it goes away. So they would not be without it. It's our number one seller in the world, worldwide. People order it, we have to ship it. It's been difficult to ship to international places, but you know, from the website, estherblock.com, they can order it direct or go to Amazon. But the point is the premise of the book is we go into all the known factors because it's not just hormonal acne. There's other factors related to acne, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, the, the areas where the acne develops on the back or the T-zone or the jawline. So because of the board certified dermatologist, Dr. Dr. Sonia Batarisi, uh, Bat uh, Batterisi Batacel, she and I collaborated word for word in this book. And it, it, it's really, the, there's no other book better written about the subject of how to get clear skin. And it's a challenge because some people, they go, well, you know, I've had acne, you know, for most of my teen years and it doesn't seem to get better. So they go on proactive, they take birth control pills, they use all these harsh methods. And those are so toxic, so dangerous. And we talk about all natural methods. So I would agree with the twins. Um, it, it won't hurt. It can only help to go to 10, 10, 80. Um, and then, you know, as their skin improves, make sure they get more raw because if they cook the cruciferous vegetables, they lose the active ingredient called DIM, methane, and indole 3 carbonyl. And so what we've done is we've discovered uh, special delivery systems within the capsule of the tablet of Esterblock that actually get to the deepest level. And I've measured hundreds of people's urinary hormone levels and you won't measure it in the blood. That's the problem. Doctors, if they do blood tests, they'll never know what's going on. So we do based on European studies, the 24 hour urine tests, and that's where you correct good and bad um, estrogen levels and then correct the androgen balance and um, um, you know get all these levels in balance. A lot of people are asking though they have hypothyroidism or they're worried about hypothyroidism. Is it still okay to eat the two pounds of cruciferous vegetables a day? Completely okay. Joel Furman uh, dismantled that myth. It's an internet myth. And on his website and in a well-written article and in an interview I did with him, and I could be happy to send you that interview with Joel Furman, Danny, uh, about cruciferous vegetables and the safety of it. Uh, but uh, send that to look up in YouTube, Joel Form, Furman and the uh, cruciferous vegetables uh, on my YouTube video. Yeah. And so the point is that um, there was a few obscure animal studies that implied it would uh, interfere with thyroid, uh, but there's no clinical studies. And I test everyone's thyroid, complete panels, free T3, T4, TSH, reverse T3, uh, the thyroid... Um, globulins and so forth. So we have a group of doctors around the world and we've never seen that this effect of cruciferous vegetables in the raw state or even from our product Esterblock has any, any negative effect on thyroid. I will say though, because over a billion people are deficient in iodine, 
uh, not getting enough seaweed, not getting enough sea vegetables and so forth. Uh, some cultures that just understand the need for this, this vital, you know, uh, iodine, which does affect thyroid. Um, the cruciferous vegetables will not interfere with iodine, but bromide, which is now in bread, they used to put iodine, iodine in salt, bromide or iodine in bread. Now there's bromide, which is a haloid that competes with the thyroid and ca causes massive damage to people. So I would encourage people to get a complete thyroid panel, but make sure they measure what's called free T3. And then it's at the high level of the range. And furthermore, if they have cold hands and feet, we have a hormone quiz at our website, if they go to estherblock.com and they'll be able to learn uh, or just go uh, direct and learn, you know, what hormones they may be deficient in. And then we can measure those by sending them test kits. So thyroid's critical. Great. Um, so two questions on the acne book. One, Jennifer wants to know, is it also for men with acne? And Lori says, can you please speak more about hormonal acne? Yes, it will work incredibly well for men. In my own case, as a man, a young man, teenager, and just flat with horrible skin. Now my skin is immaculate. And, uh, you know, it took years to understand this, but it was actually a discovery. It was kind of weird because I was trying to help people with estrogen dominance. And as you know, estrogen dominance, uh, surprisingly, doesn't just come from plastic bottles and, and uh, pesticides and so forth. And, and, cash receipts, it comes from 10 to the six over a, 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 a hundred, a, over a million times more concentration comes from estrogen from eating animals with estrous cycles. And what animals have estrous cycles? Chickens, pork, beef, chicken, you know, all these animals and, and fish has PCBs, which is loaded with estrogen. So all these estrogens. So I, I was writing a book and I haven't finished it yet. I started it years ago about estrogen dominance. And I came out with a product and um, it's, it's now going to be called ester block cream right now. It's called annihilate acne cream. And it, it had dim in it and cruciferous vegetable extracts. And then I came out with a product called Estroblock. And I sent it to people who are concerned about uh, estrogen dominance. And several people got back to me and said, did you know this clears up your skin? I said, no, I had no idea. And so I started looking into the science and it made all the sense of the world. I, it took me, I was criticized on the internet by this guy, Einstein, he must work for big pharma. And he was saying, you know, don't do this. It's not good. It's, you know, estrogen has nothing to do with acne. And I was able to prove all the theories and concur with the top board certified dermatologists in my book, Acne Be Gone for Good and represent the study. So the point is that you, you, you've got to, um, understand the, the science. And so based on that original question, did I answer it? I think so. Um, <laughs> I, I have a couple more questions about actually food. So Dina wants to know, I, this, my, my feed goes fast, so, but I remember it was about fruit. Like, can you eat too much fruit if she's putting it into smoothies or nice cream? Is it better to eat the whole fruit? She says she's, she's at a good weight, but she has some, I guess, belly fat or that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, we enjoy putting them in, in fruit smoothies and, and juicing them and stuff. The reality is the whole fruit is the better choice, particularly if you have a little bit extra belly fat. I would not buy into this lie that it increases insulin, insulin metabolism. I measure thousands of people's insulin, blood sugar levels every uh, quarter. And, and I got to tell you that this myth going around that insulin's the bad guy and fruit will elevate insulin. That is true of industrial fructose. That's man-made uh, fruit, you know, sugar, but fruit itself has what's called polyphenols. And you could eat 10 to 20 servings of fruit a day. I, I uh, concurred with Dr. Michael Greger. We concurred with Dr. Uh, Rabinowitz and the original studies on um, glucose metabolism, uh, that the glucose itself is actually perfectly controlled when you learn how to eat fruit kind of spaced out through the day. I, I, I have uh, some fruit here that I go to the Asian market and I, I love um, these. Uh, I don't know if you recognize what this is, but uh, you know, there, there's, oh, is some... that, is that jackfruit? Yeah, exactly. That is jackfruit. okay. That's the most delicious fruit. It tastes like juicy fruit gum. Oh, I love jackfruit. All my kids love jackfruit. Um, I, I do, I do sometimes juice, but I juice beets and greens. I don't juice fruit. When, when I go to a, a store and they're doing cold pressed juices, I say, leave the apple out, put beets or carrots instead, because your body can handle the absorption and the concentration of cold pressed juices better. Um, and whereas 
I think fruit is, it's just, it's already perfect as it is. Just eat it as a whole fruit. Yeah. Uh, Sylvia wants to know what you think about chocolate in general or, and low fat cocoa in particular. Um, cacao or carob, you know, in its natural state has some antioxidants and phytochemical benefits. I would caution anyone, if you have a chocolate-holic, you know, tooth or whatever it is, the danger of chocolate is not the sugar it's the milk protein and the, and the fat added into it to make a bar. So when I'm transitioning people from their chocoholic issue, I tell them get literally chocolate Hershey syrup, which is just the sugar and the chocolate, take a, a teaspoon of it. And usually that takes the edge off instead of eating a whole chocolate bar, which is disastrous. Cause when you add the fat with the sugar and then the milk protein, you're triggering the autoimmune response because of the foreign proteins from dairy product milk. And you've got the fat, which is desensitizing the insulin and the sugar can't get into the cells. So when people say they eat sugar and they're getting diabetes, it's not the sugar. We know that Dr. Um, Walter Kempner had people eat a pound of sugar a day with fruit, unlimited fruit and rice, and they were able to control their blood sugar, reduce over 147 pounds within a year, obese, and, and reduce uh, heart disease. So I don't advocate people run around eating a bunch of white sugar, but it's not as harmful as sugar with fat. And that's what a chocolate bar is. So transition to the, the, the carob, get to the natural carob. Maybe if it has a little bit of say mung fruit, mung fruit is kind of like uh, sweeter than, than sugar, but without the issues with sugar. And uh, sometimes we use stevia and I mix that with carob. And I know you do some like a chocolate cream pie or something that's amazing with figs and stuff. And that's the way to go. Right. Jay wants to know what about eczema? He's gone. Well, it might be a lady because it was just the letter J gone gluten free. Yeah. Eczema. Um, Pritikin talked about this. We had clients that came in were seventh day Adventists and they were already on a plant base, but they were vegetarian. They were using dairy product. And we had a few doctors that had eczema and we got them off the dairy product. And sure enough, that foreign protein, which triggered the autoimmune condition that we know as eczema cleared up. So I tend to do what's called a food delayed allergy test. We use each, either the ALA test that's on our website. They can link through from nickdelgado.com to our testing site or um, I use what's called the food inflammatory test and it measures foreign proteins that affect your own white blood cells. So it's kind of an individual situation. It may be the dairy. It may be they've already gotten rid of the gluten. It could be some other thing uh, in their diet that they're eating repetitively that the body is, is reacting to. And keep in mind, if you go clean on dairy for a whole month, they were they did this with uh, people with arthritis and autoimmune disease. They gave them one teaspoon of, of milk, one teaspoon, the amount you'd put in a, in a coffee, right? And all the arthritic sy symptoms came back within 20 of uh, 24 hours. So the body's very sensitive to very small amounts. So you, if you're going to go dairy free, go hundred percent dairy free, no yogurt, no cheese, no milk. Uh, go, I've been dairy free for 43 years. It's what got me into this whole field. When I was 12 years old, I had chronic diarrhea every day. I had chronic, I had horrible autoimmune conditions and skin conditions. And, and I read, I went to the doctor, the doctor said, you can't have diarrhea every day. I don't believe you. He didn't believe me. And so I, I left and I, I went and I, I went to the medical library where we used to do research instead of going to Google. And I read a medical textbook and it said dairy product in Latins, Blacks, Latinos, and Asians is highly inflammatory. And I, I went off the dairy product and sure enough, the diarrhea went, diarrhea went away and I was healed for 43 years. I've been dairy free. I get all the calcium I need from fruits and vegetables, beans, and peas, my bones, my bone density is incredible. I'm an elite athlete. I feel fantastic. But then when I went to plant-based, complete plant-based, that was the next level, oil-free, sugar-free, no chicken, no fish, no egg yolks. And all these people saying you got to get enough protein, they're insane. They're ruining America's health. And then the next level was to balance out my hormones, doing urine, blood, saliva, and knowing what herbs would balance my hormones, getting out during the daylight. So I go to bed about sunset, more like nine o'clock at night, but I wake up about five or six in the morning at sunrise. And then I go outdoors and I work out naked in the back door in the backyard because naked lets the sun come to the pineal glands, to the uh, scrotum area, to uh, the perineum, all these areas that we used to run around naked in nature and unbelievable increases in testosterone and love hormones and libido and energy and fighting the immune, building the immune system. I, I do this every day. It seems strange, but 
but I'm in the backyard. And if you uh, live stream me, you wouldn't want to, cause I'm jumping on a trampoline with trampoline stimulate the immune system. I'm in the door sun. I'm lifting weights. I'm uh, jogging and exercising, doing everything in my backyard. And I go to the beach. I have to wear some swim trunks, but you know, I, at least, um, you know, I, I make sure I get that sun. Well, so you work out naked now. What's your address again? <laughs> it's in Costa Mesa, California. Uh, I'm yep. just kidding. Everybody keeps asking about cocoa powder, though. So I don't want to tell people what to do. I'm going to be having Dr. Goldhammer on soon. And, you know, he's not a fan of any kind of chocolate products, whether it's the nib or the, you know, the bean or the powder. Well, c- c- cacao and I believe I believe it's called cacao. Or um, cacao, maybe it's cacao. C- yes, cacao. It's it's kind of a whole plant, and I, I I aspire to that. It's not as sweet, obviously. So if you're gonna use anything, you know, sweeten it with fruit or figs, or like I said, add stevia or mung fruit. Uh, you know, uh, I think that's a better choice. All right. Someone's asking about female hair loss. Wow. Where yeah. Did that go. Uh, um, Tracy says, "What about hormonal female pattern hair loss? Are there plant foods to eat that could help with that?" Yes. Um, we created a product called DHT block and we realized that DHT was not only involved involved with hormonal acne because there was a prior question you asked about that, but also DHT, which lodges in the skin lodges in the hair follicles. And so DHT needs uh, an herb called um, beta cytosterol and beta cytosterol is about a thousand times more potent than uh, supplemento. And you've heard of supplemento, but I found that beta cytosterol, which is also helpful in lowering uh, bad LDL cholesterol, helps to manage the skin. And we were getting fabulous results with people reporting improved hair growth. Also, medicinal mushrooms shockingly help to improve uh, the stem cells in the hair follicles. And I learned this from Dr. Marv Hausman. So I created a product called NeuroOrthostem, which has this whole elite mixture of medicinal mushrooms. And you know, Joel Furman's a big advocate of G-Bomb. And he talks about, what is it? Greens, um, berries, onions, mushrooms, and beans and nuts and seeds. And, and, and the M for, for, for mushrooms is anti-cancer, but these mushrooms have an adaptive, uh, adaptogen, adaptogen ability, meaning if your immune system's overactive, it calms down autoimmune diseases. If it's underactive, it supports it. And so mushrooms should be a part of your everyday diet. I include onions and mushrooms in my casseroles. And I love it that you turned me on to the, uh, I shouldn't use that word turned on with my backyard exercise, but the, the Breville oven. I use that Breville oven and I make the, the, the um, sliced uh, potato chips with some cayenne pepper and garlic powder. And I, I, I make it for the family and we put some, some tomato sauce and we did, we did, and I grow tomatoes in my backyard. I have a whole organic garden in my backyard. So I, I am so enthused as I get older to kind of share this message with people that hormonal acne, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, these things are usually fixed within 30 days. And then within the next year, it takes about a year for people to really balance out their whole body, their hormones, at least six months, particularly for the hormones. And in my experience of of monitoring people. Great. So Margie says, does the EstroBlock improve other skin conditions like dermatomyotis beyond clearing acne? You know, Dr. Sonia Batarisi Banasel is in Northern California, and she's quite the skin expert. I, I was, I, I think I went back to that original story and I didn't quite complete it about estrogen dominance. And uh, when people were getting back to me about it solving their skin problems, um, there, there's a lady named Tracy of Love Vitamins, and somehow she's a blogger, and someone sent Estroblock to her, and she started raving about it online. And literally, we've helped 50,000 young kids and adults, you know, and because there is adult acne, as you know, uh, clear up their skin incredibly well. I don't usually say that the Estroblock by itself is going to do something as you just described that particular skin condition. What I say is use the five point model and the five point model includes take Estroblock and supplements tailored to your needs based on your hormonal levels on your urine and blood test and saliva. We do all three types of tests and the inflammatory test because some skin conditions relate to inflammatory, but the five-step model that will solve most health problems are as follows. Nutrify with whole food eating, 
detoxify with infrared spa, outdoor exercise, and reduce chemicals coming into the body. Uh, and we use a product called Live Detox to help the liver to detoxify with turmeric and other incredible ingredients. And can you go downstairs, Danny, and mention to Roman? And number three- was, it, was that a kid or a bird? That was my 11-year-old. He's playing um, streaming, and he's like this incredible streamer, and he gets a little excited and passionate. That's about okay. It. Just he has, it sounded very, very much like a bird. Very cool. <laughs> Okay. So we've got Nutrify, Detoxify, Fortify. Fortify has to do with stimulating your stem cells, your chromosomes, your telomeres, there's talk about mitochondria. And I go into all the, the nutrients and herbs that uh, there's a book uh, out called Lifespan. And uh, this particular doctor talks about, you know, longevity. And I ascribe to some of those, I'm testing these things out based on uh, chromosome testing and so forth. And then uh, the, the next step um, would be the, 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 the critical factor of the power of the mind, because the power of the mind with love directs people to be consistent and have a purpose in life and driven to do the other steps. And so, and the fifth step is sleep. I made it a whole separate category because people just abuse sleep. They use too many stimulants, they can't sleep, and it causes a lot of chronic health problems. So those are the five steps. Wow. A lot of people seem to be suffering here from hair loss. One person named Wanda said it happened after a water fast. People are worried about how to prevent hair loss as they age. I, I ascribe to fasting within a window of eight in the morning. You start eating and end at eight o'clock at night. Uh, Volter uh, Longo from USC, who's done more research, uh, did the original work with the guys who talked about fasting and longevity that Fasting can cause hair loss. I would be careful because you've got to have enough of the nutrients, the building blocks for hair and skin and quality and for the immune system. And so I think that the caloric needs, unfortunately, the reason people who fast so much is because they eat so many animal products, they have to make up an excuse to narrow the window of time. They talk about between 12 noon and six o'clock and don't eat you know, sooner than or after. I don't know about you, but my blood sugar level drops like a rock if I haven't eaten by 12 noon. My energy level drops. So these things, uh, I must say that when you're, when you're wanting hair growth, um, you want to know that thyroid is a major cause of hair loss. So uh, some people are going to need to have their iodine level. And it's a simple test. You just put a drop of iodine and it's a real brown, dark color uh, you can get it, I think, at a health food store or a pharmacy, but iodine, and if, if it disappears within, an, within hours, your body's thirsty for iodine. But if, it's th if that brown spot's there the next morning, 24 hours later, that's a good test. But we also do um, thyroid testing because thyroid is a major cause of hair loss. Also, excess DHT and androgen when the, when the estrogen levels are out of balance. So that's where ester block comes in and, and DHT block. It helps with the hair growth. And so hair growth, as I mentioned, medicinal mushrooms, that's that's where the neuroortho stem, um, uh, stem cell release products help because that hair growth is important in the hair follicles. And I noticed their, their nails grow faster, um, their, their, their hair grows better, um, their skin looks immaculate, even as they age and go through these hormonal changes. But some people need a bioidentical hormonal intervention. They need peptides. Uh, peptides are uh, small protein molecules synthesized from plant derivatives, and they really have um, rather rejuvenating effects, especially uh, my clients that are uh, 70, 80, 90, because I'm working for them to figure out, you know, now we've got them oil-free plant-based, you know, they're getting their nuts and seeds, they're exercising, they're getting sleep, but aging is hitting hard, you know, just because each decade gets tougher and tougher and tougher. Anyone who's aging knows what I'm saying is true. What they got away with when they were 20, 30, or 40, they're not going to get away with 50, 60, 70. And look at Caldwell Esselstyn. What is he, 78? The guy is amazing, you know, but he's got his challenges too. Everyone has. I think challenges. he's in his 80s. I think both camp. Dr. 83? Camp, I, I'll look it up, but I believe they're both in their 80s. I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. So, so don't forget, Caldwell Esselstyn, like me, had an athletic background. He was an Olympic rower. He tells this incredible story. I have a video of him, uh, and I can't seem to find it lately, but where he talks about the Olympics against the United Kingdom and how they won for the U.S. And so this guy's got a background of physical activity. So the people who I see 
get the best results, not only combine whole food, plant-based eating, you get all the protein they need from just rice, fruits, vegetables, beans, and peas, soups, and salads, right? So long as you're at your caloric ideal body weight, not dropping weight below where you should be, that you can perform at the highest level of athletics. I don't care if you're a bodybuilder. Now we have Nehemiah Delgado, who's been plant-based his whole life, and he's winning these competitions. Is he related to you? He has the same last name. (laughs) <laughs> no, he's not. And I plan to have him on my podcast. I have talked to him on the phone. We're about yeah, to talk put in a good word for me because he doesn't answer me when I. Yeah, he's hard I, to reach. Yeah. He's hard to reach. By, by the way, excuse me for an but I don't want to forget Dr. Esselstyn. I just looked it up as 86 and a half and he will be on the show Monday. Oh my gosh. You got to love that man. He's so passionate. I love his voice and tonality, his passion. I mean, talk to him, ask him about the Olympics. He, he is yeah, like, I, actually, cause I do want him to talk about things other than just heart disease, but speaking about heart disease, Laurel, Laurel has a question. She says, I eat clean whole food plant-based with tons of greens, but my blood pressure is 160 over 60 on max side. How do I lower the top number? Good question. I used to have high blood pressure, And um, when I was 12, 13, 14 years old, I wanted to play football. So I mistakenly included a lot of animal product in my diet to bulk up, if you will. And even though I was running long distances, um, I I had bouts with high blood pressure. And the doctor, the team physician for, for high school, and when I was only 15 years old, would have me come in to have my blood pressure checked. And so he kept checking me and he said, I don't know what it is, but you have very high blood pressure. And, um, uh, I, I was sent to an internal medicine specialist who put me on blood pressure medications. And he said, you got to cut out the salt. I said, I don't use salt. He said, you got to calm down. I said, I'm fine. I, I have no stress. I'm a, you know, I'm a student. I'm doing well in school. I'm an A student. I'm an athlete. He goes, well, I don't know what it is. You have some genetic problems. So he put me on blood pressure medications. The medications wrecked havoc on me. I had horrible nightmares. One of the side effects he said reported if you have these horrible um, you know, nightmares. There was a great book written by Dr. Cleves Bennett in 12 weeks, how to lower blood pressure naturally. And he worked with Nathan Pritikin years ago. And I, to this day, it's the best book ever written because he talks about the various types of blood pressure medications, how dangerous they are and how to reduce them safely. The diuretics, the beta blockers, all these harmful. And I know, um, John McDougall has a section in his book, um, uh, McDougall's medicine, a second opinion, still the best book ever written on, on, diseases along with Michael Greger's books, but he has a section on blood pressure. But the point is my top number, remember the top number, top 160 over over 80, right? Uh, 110 over 60, by the way, you have half the risk of stroke as a person of 120 over 80, which we consider to be normal blood pressure. The top number, the 120 or the 160 in this person's case is caused by thickening of the blood. So something's causing the person's blood to be thick. It could be oils, could be fats. I didn't hear what her diet was exactly, but the the oil or thickening is the top number. The bottom number, the 60, 70, 80, 90, mine got as high as, believe it or not, 220 over 110, which I blacked out in the hospital. And I ended up having a TIA, a stroke. I, I was like John McDougall. I had a stroke when I was only 22 years old. And, 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 and little did I know it was all the protein I was eating. And so when I cut out the chicken, the fish, the eggs, the turkey and all that, uh, initially I cut out the oils, you know, just cutting out fat free. And my top number came down with exercise, but my bottom number, the, the 120 over 80, the 80 wouldn't come down. And I just, I refused to give up the egg whites and the chicken. Cause I thought, what am I going to get my protein? I'm an athlete. What am I going to do? But it came to me, life was more important than, <laughs> than being a, an athlete or, you know, whatever. And so I gave up the chicken completely. And sure enough, my cholesterol, because I was measuring it every, every week, my cholesterol dropped like a rock. It went from like 200 and something down to, to 122. And to this day, I've kept that bottom number down with ideal HDL, LDL cholesterol, like the Tarmar Indians who run nonstop for 120 miles, ultra marathons, the greatest runners in the world. And what do they eat? Panola nuts, uh, corn tortillas, fruits, vegetables, beans. And so the point is I'm a completely plant-based, hundred percent plant-based. I'm an elite athlete. I can compete at the highest level with high energy and all because I learned to get my blood pressure down. Um, And it wasn't just salt. Uh, I would be careful of salt. In northern Japan, they eat a lot of salt, uh, 20 grams of salt. In southern Japan, they eat 10 grams of salt. 
And, and, and where the higher the salt intake, yes, they do have higher blood pressure, even on a plant-based diet. So, so salt could increase blood pressure, but it's really potassium. It's plants, fruits, and vegetables that are high in potassium that balance out the sodium. And that's what brings the top number down, the 120, the 180, along with an oil-free diet. So I would just maximize the, the vegetables, the potassium rich. And people don't know that peppers are high in potassium. In my original book, um, uh, uh, Grow Young and Slim, it's hard to get. You can probably get it online. I have an ebook of this now. But on Amazon, there's probably some used copies. But I listed all the foods rich in potassium, vitamin E, C, D, all the foods, the top 10 or 20 foods of each category. And sure enough, I found studies of indigenous cultures that eat a lot of potassium rich plants and they have very low blood pressure. And it related directly. It wasn't sodium, it was more potassium and, and the balance. Nice. Um, I know you mentioned you lived in Costa Mesa. Do you actually see patients in the office or do you do any like remote counseling? Because Jay asked if you did like consults. Yes, I do remote counseling. We do see patients uh, two miles from the ocean on 17th Street. Uh, our address is on our website, nickdelgado.com. And eligibility to see me, I don't just accept anyone because I want to make sure people are serious. If they go to nickdelgado.com, there's an eligibility quiz and either one of my team members will handle the individual and bring them results. Each of my team member coaches have worked with me five or 10 years. They're sharp, they're good. If they have a question they can't answer, they slip it to me. But some people are selected to see me if they're a rather challenging case. And um, I, I'm, I'm happy to, con I, I love, I usually do group, group consults. I'm used to co counseling people like in the Pritikin days, 50 people in the room, the doctor would measure people's blood pressure and the nurse in the corner, talk to each person and do the charting. But I do remote counseling and um, it, it all can be set up at nickdelgado.com. Nice, very good. Uh, some Fran is saying I've been on whole food plant-based SOS free and still have high cholesterol. If somebody's eating nut seeds and avocado, couldn't that make their cholesterol stay high? I wouldn't blame the nut seeds, avocado. I, I would actually surprisingly look at their thyroid level. If free T3 is not towards 4.0 on a blood test. Free T3 is the bioactive form of thyroid. Ironically, if they don't have enough iodine, these things, Dr. David Brownstein has shown lack of iodine and uh, a low thyroid production. If, if it's low thyroid, thyroid's involved with the met metabolism of cholesterol. And this could be that hidden factor. I know my mom for years, um, you know, who's been plant-based <laughs> for as long as I've been teaching for 43 years, she's 85 years old. Uh, I should say 85 years young, she has no arthritis, you know, she, she's great. She, she follows a diet really well, except when some of the grandkids take her out or kids, you know, to, to eat. Sometimes, you know, they deviate from the diet, but you know, her, her downfall, she doesn't like to exercise, you know, and exercise doesn't affect cholesterol so much, but affects a lot of other things. So I'm working on getting her a treadmill. So while she's doing her work, she still works 85 years old every day, puts in a long day. And I want her like Gregor does where he's on a treadmill talking and doing his talk show. I have uh, these uh, uh, Tesla device and for most shows I hook up this Tesla device to my muscles and I'm stimulating my muscles, my legs, my back, my chest and it's, it's generating 400 volts of, uh, of electric energy to my muscles and contracting strong muscular contraction. So it's as if I'm doing 500 pull-ups, 500 sit-ups. So whenever I do long stints at the computer, I'm using the Tesla Max. I love the machine and it keeps my muscles strong and firm. And, you know, I'm single. So going out, being flabby isn't- um, Wait, wait a minute. You're single. Hold, hold on. No, this is, this is important. You're single? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, because I get a lot of requests from the shows. I get a lot of women. I've been doing some very uh, serious work in my spare time, matchmaking prominent vegans. You may know that I was the one that introduced Dr. Greger to his girlfriend. So oh, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. And they came out finally. I mean, it was killing me. I had to keep it quiet all these months and I knew, and, and I couldn't even tell Dr. Lyle, but they, they came out. But, uh, so um, I believe you're a Capricorn. If I'm not I am. And I am, okay. I am in love with passion and life. Yeah. And, and all right, ladies, you know what more. to do. If you're interested, write me, send me your picture and uh, <laughs> tell me how old you are and where you live. And I'll see what I can do. Sorry to interrupt, but this is, I didn't realize you were single because <laughs> you know, Gina is saying, where do you get all your energy if you don't drink coffee? You, you know, it's it's an amazing question you asked that. My mom, who's drank coffee most of her life at age 85, she was having horrible, severe cramps and 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 problems of re, of, of recovery and getting uh, some some issues of headaches. And I I said, Mom, 
you know what? I did a complete literature search and it was very obscure, but it talks about, even though I have you on trace minerals and magnesium and you, you know, the cramps aren't going away. Let's try going off coffee. Well, there was this long pause, Chef AJ, off coffee, right? Her whole life, she's drank coffee. She's been plant-based oil-free for her whole life. And she, she, you know, because I'm her son and she knows she trusts me for health advice. Um, she went off coffee. She had a horrendous time for two weeks because she had a sleep excessive amount of time. You know, um, she, she would want to take naps. But by the third week, she was just turned around. By the fourth week, the cramps went away. It changed her life. She feels incredible. I personally have not used coffee most of my entire life. I, 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 when I've competed in strength endurance competitions, I do use a Garana based product called power and speed or lean and fit. And, uh, it, it, I usually can beat these athletes without that, but I know they're all caffeined up and they're on steroids and things. So I tend to want that added advantage. So when I break world records, which I have, um, I depend on very elegant energy system pathways because I understand what's called methylization. I understand the biochemistry behind hormone metabolism. And one of the things I notice is with high testosterone level, and I maintain the level of a 22 year old, believe it or not. My son, who's 27 years old, his testosterone level is 1,500. You ask any 66 year old approaching 66 in January 5th, um, what their testosterone level, and they're lucky to have 100 or 200. A woman who's in great shape will have 50 for testosterone. A woman who's in fabulous shape with a lot of energy and no, um, cellulite and high libido and good in, in business will have a testosterone of 300. I have women that have higher levels than a guy age 50. A, a guy has more estrogen at age 50 than a menstruating woman at age 25. So I'm a world hormone expert where all the guys you interview, they know diet and exercise. And I studied with the original greatest mentor about health and nutrition, Nathan Pritikin. I studied with his mentors, which was Dennis Burkett and, um, uh, the, the the whole host of Ernest Winder and all, where all the original science, I was at the right place at the right time. When I was only 23 years old, I walked up to Nathan Pritikin after a six hour talk in Pasadena, California. And I said, I want to work with you. And I showed him my before after picture, how his book live longer now had changed my life and got my blood pressure down and saved my life. And he invited me to come and I got to work with Monster Massey and all the scientists from Loma Linda University. And we did these conferences with the greatest plant-based doctors. Now we call that lifestyle medicine, meditation, exercise, all of it. I even learned from Tony Robbins. I was his life coach and I became the top NLP timeline therapist because people are struggling with changing their diet and exercise. It's not just they intellectually know they need to do this. They emotionally can't do it. And so I give them that 97% advantage where I embed certain things with tapes and videos and counseling. And within about three sessions, They've let go of these harmful habits and I've got to their subconscious level and they intuitively know with reinforcement that they're going to do this the rest of their life. So for myself, I'm passionate. My energy is high because I don't listen to the negative news. I shut it off the media. When I was writing my book for four months, I had to listen to the media to understand what they were saying to write my new book, Blood Doesn't Lie. But I, I, I don't want to be infected by false information. The, the genre that they're putting out there is so far from the truth about the immune system and health. It's it just, it just, I, I can't even go into that story for obvious reasons. We'd have to be on an uncensored show, uh, if you will, and not YouTube. But I, I will say this, that energy is because I use supplements, I use sleep, I use exercise, and I don't do excessive exercise. I built up like the Russians, like the Romanians, like the Bulgarians, where we do kind of long, slow distances with weights and we, we train. We don't overtrain and get so wiped out we can't work out the next day. Now, I love... Mike Mensur and Dorian Yates. These are bodybuilders who learned extreme methods to get large muscles. So you want to get large muscles. There's pictures of me with massive muscles. And even though I'm Spanish surname and Indian and, and, um, uh, Welsh. Uh, I, I don't have the genetics to be big like Arnold, but I manifested my genetic potential through what's called negative force rep training, which is very intense. It's, even elite athletes have difficulty going through it. And I put myself through that to, to reach the highest levels of athletics. But where I gained the most benefit was working with Dragon Radovich, where he teaches this long distance dumbbell lifting, which some guys, you know, use it. And we, we, we curl and press for an hour. Uh, I, and, and so that built up my strength and my endurance, but over years of lifting, 
And so I have this core of muscle memory. So these elegant energy pathways through being able to burn fat effectively, but not depend on glucose as my primary source, fit or fat. Covert Bailey wrote that book. Um, I probably, I have that book right here, Fit or Fat, a great book still to this day, accurately written that most people when they first exercise burn mostly glucose, but eventually you learn to become a fat burner. And that comes after about seven months of veteran, extensive, consistent exercise where you get your heart rate up. I don't rest between sets. I keep my heart rate going. And also the Atlas of Endocrinology, Dr. Terry Hertog. I'm a world expert in hormones because I train with the top doctors in the world. And- uh, this original book, Mastering the Powers of Your Inner Health, I asked the power of questions and questions are the answer. And through that book, you can probably find a used copy on Amazon. I, I teach how to raise children, what their diet should be uh, when, they're, when they're infants and pediatrics and breastfeeding and all through to senior. But I also teach the power of the mind. And I wrote this book for the Tony Robbins events. And, um, you know, I learned with Nan Bromfen. I shared this with John McDougall. He was shocked. He didn't know that that Pritikin had a mentor when it came to nutrition, Nan Bromfen. And I gave him a copy of this book. I sent it to him. Uh, he, he was thrilled. Um, so, as you know, I am like a nonstop reader, but I love podcasts because podcasts break out before books, right? Well, you have a podcast and I was actually listening to the episode today with David Katz because he's going to be on the show next week. So I appreciated that interview very much. Hey, Nick, uh, Dr. Me, Dr. Delgado, can I ask you, is 38 too young? Because I have a marriage proposal. I, I'm, you know what? Um, 38 is probably young enough to keep up with me. So if she doesn't <laughs> mind that I'm, I'm going to live past 148 um, and, and make love on my 160th birthday, if she doesn't mind making love on the 160th birthday, that would put her at, uh, what is that math? about 130. So uh, yeah, she, 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 she should, should be fine. Okay, I'll hook you up. Uh, Dita wants to know, how many books have you written? Um, well, I've written 10 books. And I've reprinted them as I update them. So there's several titles. There's probably 20 different titles out. But the, the core books um, are, um, as I mentioned, uh, the, 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 the Simply Healthy with 250 recipes that I want you to know the story. It took me uh, about 15 years of gathering cookbooks around the world. And I travel around the world because I, I get invited to speak at anti-aging conferences in India, Germany, South Africa, you name the country I was invited. And I was voted best speaker in South Africa at many conferences because I'm pretty passionate and I know my science and I walk my talk and all the doctors who, uh, shall we say, are anti-aging, they come to me when they need help because I'm there. I'm even the doctor to the plant-based doctors between you and I won't name names, but you know, there's certain things that happen as we age that I'm particularly uh, adept at helping people with. And as I mentioned, I showed it earlier, mastering love, sex, and intimacy, uh, grow young and slim, uh, the acne be gone for good. And, uh, you know, and again, I think probably the most important is this whole idea of the power of questions, because I, I'm putting out more, shall I say, NLP timeline therapy work, particularly people with not just drug addictions to cocaine and methamphetamine. Our, our society is addicted to all kinds of chemicals, um, but they're addicted to food. And so I help them to, to move away from that addiction and replace it with healthy addictions to making love, to energy, to eating healthy, to passion and develop their purpose. So this is kind of my big focus now in the next decade of my life. Nice. How did you get involved with Nathan Pritikin? And is there anybody left of his organization? I would, I mean, cause I, I loved his books. I would have loved to have met him. I knew his son, Robert Pritikin. I knew his wife, Eileen Pritikin. They were family to me at the time. I, I was invited to work with Nathan when he was in Santa Barbara and then he moved to Santa Monica and they had a live-in center. And I, I literally would drive from where I lived in uh, El Monte, California. I went to a Royal High School and I, I drove to USC and I got my undergraduate degree in USC in psychology. And I was a pre-med student. I got into physical therapy school. So um, when I had my stroke as a physical therapy student, I said, oh my gosh, I, all these students are 
they don't know about this. So they, here we're teaching physical therapy rehabilitation to recover from stroke and, and, and orthopedic conditions. And here we're feeding them in the hospital horrific foods that are causing the diseases, right? So um, I, I literally uh, bought his book after watching him. Um, there's a, I have the only video on YouTube our three patients. And that video shows Nathan Pritikin guiding three heart patients through the Miami Heart Institute. It's to this day, one of the great videos on 60 Minutes and the highest viewed ever on 60 Minutes. And they were going to they were gonna bash him on 60 Minutes because that's what 60 Minutes does. And they discovered that here he had had all these answers for heart disease. He didn't even get to talk about, you know, cancer and other conditions. And so uh, I watched that show and, and I knew I had high blood pressure. And I thought, my gosh, I'm going to be a, a stroke or a heart attack victim. And so I bought his book, Live Longer Now. To this day, the best book I've ever read uh, besides, you know, some of the more current books in including my own, but um, the book explained why I had high blood pressure, why people have diabetes and, it, 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 and heart disease. And it was written by Leonard and Hofford and Pritikin. So when I heard about Pritikin, I, I changed my diet. I set up a nutritional counseling center at Lock Beeman's Physical Therapy in Temple City, California. And I would coach instead of doing physical therapy, I was passionate about diet and I would analyze what they ate, the vitamins and minerals and fat content of their diet and explain to them how to change. And then, and then I followed it myself and I, I had this incredible before after picture that I show on my website and I had lost 50 pounds. My blood pressure came down to normal. And I, like I mentioned, I heard um, one of my students who came to see me at, new, at the Nutritional Counseling Center said, Nathan Pritikin's going to come speak at Pasadena, California, and you got to go see him. I said, oh my gosh, of course. So I showed up, I had my before after picture with me, and there were 600 people, and he gave the most amazing talk for six hours. I was spellbound. He, he taught things that I had never heard in all of of a pre-med school and, and USC and, and later Loma Melinda, he taught all these things. And, and I went, I waited to be the very last person, you know, the people were in line to get his book autographed. And I was the very last person. And I, I walked right up to him. I said, Nathan, I, I read your book, Live Longer Now. Here's my before after picture. It helped me lose 50 pounds, lower my blood pressure. I feel incredible. Thank you so much. And he looked at me, said, you did this on my program? And I said, yes. And he said, how would you like to come work with me at the Pritikin Longevity Center? And I, oh my gosh, it was a chance of a lifetime. I had a chance to get into graduate school, postgraduate school, and I put that on hold. And I later went to Loma Linda in uh, health science, but I went to work with Nathan Pritikin. I became his right-hand man because I was so passionate, enthusiastic, and he had me learn all the medical um, seminars. I have them all in my black files to this day. Um, and no one has access to them with his actual notes on them. And I have all his medical journals and literature. And so I don't know, I haven't, I, I tried a few times. There was a Dr. Kinney that I hired and trained that worked in Florida and did something with the Pritikin thing in Florida. But I, I'm not sure any of his, other than Dr. Kinney, who he would know me because I was the one that hired and trained him. So I hired all the, the educators and trained them all at the Pritikin Longevity Center in the outpatient programs. Nice. So we have a question, somebody that has breast cancer, I think she said stage 1.A, wanted to know how to lower uh, estrogen. Uh, you, you see what I see, Dr. Delgado, it goes very, very quickly. So, uh, but um, oh, now it's gone. Oh, here it is, Judy. Lowering estrogen naturally, trying to avoid aromatase inhibitors doing, due to ER plus stage 1A breast cancer. Okay. Um I get a number of referrals from Hope for Cancer, uh, and there's a great book uh, written about the subject, and uh, the doctors there refer me their patients when they graduate from their live-in programs in Cancun, Mexico, and, and Tijuana, Mexico, and I have a lady, uh, Miss Whitaker, who uh, it lives in Pennsylvania, and uh, she had advanced stages of not only breast cancer, but multiple tumors throughout her body. And she was a great student, but when she was leaving, she was terrified. She says, what do I do when I go home? And Dr. Tony Heman, as the director of the facility, said, well, you've got to go see Dr. Nick Delgado. He, he's the go-to on hormones, and you have a hormone-related cancer, and you need help, and he'll be able to give you the guidance. And so 
Um, she followed up with my staff and she followed it with me and she was an amazing student. She followed everything we taught her. Um, she used what's called a hot box. We use an infrared spa because you want to kind of heat up the body to stimulate the immune system. She followed the diet to a T. She, we, we measured her 24 hour urine hormone levels. She had abnormal levels and we were able to put her on live detox, ester block, uh, a number of supplements that also seem to assist in a very positive way. And she kept in touch with her doctor kept uh, monitoring her levels and the result was that they they checked all of her tumors and her tumor markers and they all shrunk all seven of the tumors disappeared uh, except for one little hot spot in the original tumor site and to this day she's like one of my best students so some people are highly coachable and you know when you have these types of so-called uh, genetic tendency breast cancers or uh, other types of cancers of its type um, you can't let people uh, ignore the fact that there's what's called epigenetics we can alter our gene expression by changing our supplements, our diet, our exercise, our mindset. And you have to follow these five steps, just like my favorite. And I want her to see this because it's really possible. DrDay.com, D-R-D-A-Y.com. You notice that I don't just recommend my own recommend my own websites because I'm about changing lives. And here's a doctor who's now in her eighties and she had a horrible breast cancer and tumors through her body. And the doctors want to do chemotherapy and radiation and all these horrific uh, treatments. And if you buy her course, which is like 200 bucks, she has this one CD that to this day is the best. And she just goes through, do you know, radiation causes cancer. She goes chemotherapy and she goes down every one of them and she explains the harm of them. She goes, if you change to meditate, meditation, prayer, love, uh, exercise. And she's got like a 10 step program. I have a five step program. Amazingly, we had never worked together, but we teach the same thing. The only difference is I tend to get more in the hormonal levels. She doesn't work so much with the hormones, but the point is she, there's pictures of a big tumor on her breast that, 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 that they removed because it was so large, it was heavy, but they never did radiation or chemotherapy. And to this day, she's alive and she's been teaching for years. She's amazing, uh, incredible spokesperson for plant-based. She won't admit that it's plant-based and juicing and cold press that really did the trick. She says it was more getting away from negative people and prayer, which I can't ignore that too, right? It's gotta be part of her healing. Dina wants to know what you think of mammography. She refuses to do I would that. never do it. Um, if it was me, Dr. Ben Johnson, God rest his soul, he passed on. And he was a great doctor out of Florida. And he, he unfortunately, he was raised in a state where they love chicken, fried chicken. And he wanted to be plant-based. He didn't stick to it real well. There's this great interview with he and I, Dr. Ben Johnson. And he wrote a book about breast cancer and monography. And he says, say no to monography. Men, 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 uh, and he said, but do ultrasound and do thermography and get on plant-based, do the supplements, do all the steps I'm talking about. And I have some close relatives that are struggling with breast cancer. And the doctors, when they're white coat and they tell you there's nothing we can do, we have to do radiation and chemotherapy. I will sometimes condone lumpectomy if it's large and it's taking up space or it's in a place that it should be removed. But the reality is the body can be detected and there's hot points in thermography that isn't detected by mammography. Mammography increases your risk in the breast sensitive tissue to 15 times higher rate of breast cancer. In other words, it can cause cancer. And so there's a big push to do with the pink ribbons and to get mammography. I would never uh, condone it for one of my family relatives. Uh, for the general public, I might have to say, so I don't get in trouble that you have to do what your doctor says, but be smart, read the book by Ben Johnson. It's still in print and you'll be convinced when you look at all the studies and they might say, well, ultrasound and, and thermography are not very sensitive. The reality is that mammography has what's called false positives and they'll see pick up cysts and they'll tell you you have to have a, a mastectomy and radical, you know, lymph, uh, 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 the lymph, lymph glands removed. And it's not true. So there's a lot of what's called false positives with that test. So not only is it a greater risk and they crush your breast down on the machine, there's so many things wrong with it. Wow. So Michelle wants to know if you eat pasta. So instead of answering that directly, maybe you could just tell us what a day in, in the life of Dr. Delgado looks like eating and exercise. 
Okay, good. Um, I start out exercising in the morning with a lot of cold pressed juice and salads. And I have soaked nuts and seeds, flaxseed, chia, walnut uh, that I soak in water, keep in the refrigerator to avoid them getting moldy. And then I put various fruits like the uh, jackfruit and the um, uh, berries. And, and I, I start that so I have enough calories to do my exercise while I'm sunbathing, uh, doing squats and sit-ups, you know, of course all naked and I'm doing jumps on my trampoline. I can do pull-ups the world record for Chrome press. I currently hold that record. No one's exceeded lifting 50,000 pounds overhead, but I read about the world record for for uh, chin-ups and this guy, he's a Marine. Uh, he's been interviewed by John Rollo and I'm like, God, he did so many pull-ups. So I'm, I'm building it up naturally, but I'm, I'm using a trampoline, a, a bungee cord trampoline. So I can get up to over a thousand pull-ups right now. And so that stimulates my lymphatic system on a trampoline, which is part of the core to building up the immune system. So in the morning, um, I eat a lot of vegetables because I tend to be a guy that loves to eat and I take my family out to a lot of vegan restaurants. So sometimes I get a few more calories than I need. And so I have to offset that by eating big bowls of salads. My, my salad, Dennis Burkett talked about this going to Africa. He said that the serving bowl, the people would eat about two times, three times a day, but they would have this huge serving bowl. And I thought, Oh, the serving bowl. He said, no, you don't, you don't understand. The serving bowl isn't to take little bowls and, and distribute the salads to the, to, to each person at the table. The serving bowl is your bowl. And Dennis Burkett looked at this massive amount of food and then he, then he understood his theories about fiber. But, you know, plants don't, uh, vegetables and, and salads don't have much fiber. You got to eat a lot of it to get enough fiber. You know, the fiber is really in the beans and, and, and whole grain um, spaghetti and, and, and whole grain bread. It's there. And that's where you get the fiber. But then people who have gluten or they have GMO issues and, you know, uh, issues. So, so I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of careful um, I do have some sprouted whole grain bread here, and I, I have some, um, I don't know if you can see it, some <laughs> sprouted whole grain bread here. Um, I, I like to get the Essene bread in the frozen section. You know, the, the biblical time, they talked about uh, uh, Essene bread, E-S-S-E-N-E, -E, and, uh, and then I have some uh, apricots here that I eat with, with, with my bread, and sometimes I use some sunflower seeds, and I pour off... Um, the oil, but if you want to see what I actually have today, uh, do you, do you I, uh, exercise before you eat? Uh, no, uh, I don't like to exercise on an empty stomach. There's people that do who are very fat or have too much animal products and oils in their system. Remember when I wake up in the morning, I've gone to, uh, eight hours of solid sleep and I use hypnosis tapes at night that I've created to keep you know, if I wake up early, I, I go back to sleep. I make sure I get my eight hours, even though I could get by in four to five. I like eight. Um, but um, I like to have enough calories titrated to get through my workouts. And my workouts are very intense. And remember, I, I do at least an hour, hour and a half with stretching, trampoline, curl and presses. My heart rate gets up to 160 to 180 beats. When I broke the world record, my heart rate was at 200 beats a minute for an hour. So I have garlic and beans and I went to Sevilla, which is a, a Spanish restaurant, and I got vegetarian uh, pa uh, paella. And there was, I could tell a little bit of oil in it. Sometimes, you know, I go to restaurants, obviously I'm going to get a little bit of oil. So I use small amounts of it and I have green Ortega chilies in here. And I love spices and chilies because chilies stimulate the immune system better. And they're higher, higher in vitamin C and A than, uh, than oranges or any other food. So this, this, um, I have uh, warmed up and, and so I keep it next to me. I never, listen to me, I never leave to the office without a container of food with me uh, to, to get through my days or 12 hour days. I do cut it off at eight o'clock for family. And if, if I am lucky enough to have a date or to be with my kids, but um, you know, uh, I, I start eating from the time I wake up when I first feel a little hungry. I don't eat if I'm not hungry, but I usually find that my glucose levels are telling me I need to eat. My triglycerides are low and I eat just enough to get through the workout and titrate through because I train at world-class levels. I, I'm not strolling in the park for a walk. So 
for my, my eating needs might be different. I would never go into the gym without a, a little sack of apricots or apples or grapes. I got to have some glucose because intense workouts require, require glucose and anaerobic metabolism, which I border on where I'm a little bit out of breath. And by the way, I breathe through my nose the whole time. I do not uh, breathe through my mouth, no matter how intense my exercise is, because breathing through the nose is an art and it builds your energy, your strength and your immune system. Nice. So Janine has a question about, let me read this, lipidemia. She says, how does one go about getting a proper diagnosis for it? Well, hyperlipidemia, unless you're talking about, uh, there's a condition where the, the fat the accumulates yeah. in the legs. That's what she's talking about. Yeah, that's a rough one. And I, I think it has a lot to do with the lymphatic system that the lymphatics, remember how I said the fat first goes into the lymphatics and it clumps up the, the lymphatic system. So the, the diagnosis, and, and I have some medical doctors that are great at diagnosis on, on the East Coast and the West Coast. Um, I, I don't get involved with the diagnosis part, but once I know what the conditions are, I, you know, I work through with extensive questionnaires and hormone testing. So we've had really good success with, um, I know there's some videos out showing keto and people are reducing um, that condition. I don't I don't believe that's the way to go. And I think an oil-free, a true unprocessed diet with exercise, with the understanding that the adrenals, and there's also um, uh, beta thymusin, the thymus glands right in the chest here. And so you have to kind of tap the chest and you, you, you want to stimulate the thymus glands. And there are uh, what's called peptides that you can use to, to enhance uh, the uh, beta thymusin. So there's multiple um, inflammatory conditions that relate to what she's talking about, but I would definitely uh, go full on into the diet, the exercise, the supplementation, and then balance the hormones. And we, we would be able to help a person like that. Right, so you are very energetic. Do you ever rest and what do you do for fun? <laughs> um, I, um, my favorite is to go to Newport Beach, right to the right of the pier, Huntington Beach, and I take my dumbbells and at sunset, I start lifting and pressing and as pretty girls are walking by, they're saying hi and my energy's high and I'm breathing the ocean air and uh, the daylight, the sun and the sunset and I'm smiling, listen to my favorite music. I listen to podcasts when, when, you know, when I'm learning, but for me, uh, you know, music is highly uh, stimulating when it comes to doing exercise beyond what I normally put my body through, if you will. So being at the beach, ending the day at sunset, a walk on the beach into the ocean, and oftentimes I'll even take my dumbbells and stand knee high in the ocean where I'm grounding, if you understand the uh, electromagnetic energy. There's some belief about the energy of the body and reducing free radical damage and inflammation. Uh, it may be some truth to it because we ran around barefoot. We didn't walk on paved ground. Um, so keeping the body cool. I don't heat up during exercise. I always keep my body extremely cool. And uh, ideally, because I'm near the ocean, I can stand in the ocean. Uh, but I keep uh, large amounts of cold pressed juices, 64 ounces while I'm training. And, um, you know, I get a lot of fluid, so I never get dehydrated. And so I think ultra marathon runners put themselves at risk when they don't get enough fluids and they overheat. Um, but I, I do believe that uh, a beautiful day is to, to be out with friends, laughing. I love to go to comedy sh shows because my mind is kind of over overactive. And, and I, I just thrill on the ability of the human mind to understand sarcasm and, uh, you know, just commonalities among humans. So, so humor for me is huge. I, I, I mean, that's a great date. Go out, you know, to, for a date, eat plant-based and, you know, listen to a comic, just, you know, roll with it. And I wish I could do stand-up comedy. I know you had a few stints. Yeah. That. Well, you know, my class starts up again, everybody, August, you want to, you want to take it. It's really fun. I oh, think I you could that. do it. I would love to. I'd love. I'm going to contact you seriously. Yeah. I just, you know, maybe you'll come back. I mean, we've gone a little long, and I'm going to be real honest. I, my bladder is telling me <laughs> I got to go because I'm, it's used to having this. But I would love to have you back sometime. Yeah. What do you do when you got to go? I mean, I could I just leave. It, I could I just keep let you it talk. Near and, me. Fortunately, the podcast is shoulder up. You know, so yeah. it's like, oh well. 
Yeah, that's me. I could just leave and come back and you could talk to my people. But I think this would be a nice place to end it because I've really enjoyed talking to you and our people seem to have as well getting to know you. And thank you for what you do to really, especially what you do with oil to educate people, especially now with so many people just claiming it's the Holy Grail and it's a health food and it's going to help people with heart disease, which I just don't even understand because if it was, it's still 4,000 calories a pound and who in the heck can eat it? That's There's what I only two exceptions with oil that I might buy into, and that is what's called pulling with coconut in your mouth, coconut oil, and spitting it all out maybe to cleanse the mouth a little bit, maybe. And maybe because of uh, Bernardo Lapello, who's a, died, I believe, at the age of 114. He lived in a harsh environment in Arizona, but he'd rub olive oil on his skin every day and go for a walk. And so he bragged how his skin had little or no wrinkles. So I don't mind if people rub oil on their skin, the little bit of absorption, according to Dr. Press is 0.01%, which will relieve any essential fatty acid deficiency, even if you are on zero fat, meaning on a glucose IV. So I'm okay with rubbing like walnut oil or olive oil uh, on the skin, but do not consume it. It just doesn't make sense. Thank you for saying that. We started with oil and we ended with oil. Well, thanks so much. Great catching up with you, Dr. Delgado. I hope you guys will come back at 4 p.m. today. We have a bonus show with Dr. Gustavo Tolosa. He's going to be making an incredible, delicious recipe you won't want to miss. And tomorrow at 11 a.m., we have one of my oldest chef colleague friends. His name is Raw Sheet. He was really the OG when it came to raw food. And he's going to be making a bunch of different fruit soups and vegetables. Thanks again, Dr. Delgado. It was just a pleasure talking to you. It's been great. Did you say you have a podcast or Spotify on iTunes or Spotify? I don't have one yet. I'm hoping to have one. My husband's looking into doing that because like you, then I won't have to like put any makeup on. I can just do the same thing. <laughs> I'd love thing. to post the show because it, you're such a great interviewer and you let me roll. I know I kind of dominate conversations, but uh, well, a that's lot okay. of that's, Well, you're, you're a great guest for me because you know, you have sometimes the opposite where you can't get anybody to say anything. So this is great. <laughs> yes, 4 p.m. today. So that would be in about uh, three hours. We have Dr. Gustavo Delosa making a delicious recipe. We, we do sometimes add bonus shows, which is why it's great if you turn your notifications on so you'll get notified. Thanks again. I hope to see you at one of the conferences once things open up again. Food demonstrations are where it's at. I hope everyone tunes in. It made all the difference for my students. Without those, they would not have adhered for 20, 30, 40 years. I have clients that have been on this program for a lifetime and continue, but it all had to do with teaching them the techniques of how to make it delectable and, and enjoyable and take those recipes from books and make them real. Right. And he, he's got a book right here with some <laughs> delicious recipes. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye, Dr. Delgado.